Thanks for joining us. Today I have a good friend Todd with me. Todd was diagnosed with uh, psychogenic non-epileptic seizures and his story is really fascinating to me because unlike mine, which was triggered by uh, trauma in my past, his was completely medical. And so I'm really excited for, for this to be part of the conversation. And I've known Todd for now almost four years. He reached out to me through YouTube about four years ago and was um, we established you know a connectivity a rapport with each other and he's just been sharing his journey as he's gone along so i'm really honored and i just want to say thank you for coming on you're well, most welcome so can you share with us a little bit about what the start of it looked like i know for everybody their story is different about how they came to find out that they had pnes so, oh. Well, the start of it, of course, you know, uh, it, it's one of them kind of things that sneak up on you and you don't even know what's going on, of course. Um, if I had to say, I mean, at first it was, you know, a lot of stress that I had had on me at first, you know, and I was, you know, of course, you know, medically as as well um, with the celiacs, you know, that I have and everything. Um, it started off like with, uh, like say, for instance, um, I was actually at a, a job on site one time working and I just kind of completely just fell out it's like my brain and everything just physically shut down i mean there was a lot of stress going over and my blood pressure was extremely high and uh, a lot of that stuff can actually could trigger into that pnes and could trigger a lot of other stuff too um so it's uh like it started off kind of like as a, as a sneak up it stuck up and like attacked me like quick mm -hmm. so it was very sneaky when it got when it got a hold of me and it was like my first episode was like I went into just about a complete lockdown I, I, I couldn't move I couldn't do nothing and it was unbelievable it was like the first we thought you know something y'all he's he's there's nothing nothing to do you know that they can do and they they did every test you know the first time that I went into the hospital the first time which you know a lot of you know, when you go into the hospital, even if you do have something medically, it puts a lot of stress on you, not only you, but it also puts stress on your family, and yeah. your family goes through it as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it it was one of the things where they did every test under the sun to find what's going on, and of course, at that time, they didn't find nothing. So that's when they, you know, they also started you off on the seizure medicine and all that, thinking you, you're epileptic, you know, of course, you know, they put you on them probes to see if you had seizures and everything. And like I said, that's all the start of it whenever I first went into the hospital over it to see what was going on. And it's like the first time it happened to me, I just completely fell out and went limp. I could not even move. Hmm. It's, I was in like this mental state lockdown. It was and I can hear people talking to me even when I had seizures. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I mean, I did have a couple that they, they said they made a couple spots that might have like triggered a little bit mm -hmm. to where it might have caused me to do a real limp like that. But they also said some of the PNES seizures can cause that too. So it can cause that mental lockdown to where you just don't, you're not even aware you're even, well, you're aware, but you're, you're not there kind of in a state. I mean, it's, it's totally weird, but it's, like I said, it was something I had to conquer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when you said that, well, first you started by saying that you had celiacs. Was that diagnosed mm -hmm. before or after or as a result that was, of? That, that, that was diagnosed after um, about eight months. It took them eight months to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So after you were diagnosed with PNES? After, yes. Yeah. And they were, I mean, and then I, I said I had several times where I'd go in and they put me in, uh, the hospital, and they put me right back on the seizure medicine. I mean, and it, different doctors thought different things. And and I was at so many medical facilities going back and forth. I went to New Orleans. I went to Jackson, Mississippi, um, and all over the town of Hattiesburg from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Even like my local doctor, you know, uh, tried to do whatever they could to help me, you know, because they, right. they, they were, I mean, everybody was spooked because of the first thing they thought. was like, something's medically wrong at first. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing they think. So they put you on all those medicines and having the celiacs and why they were putting you on the medicine can cause the PNES seizures to be even worse, actually, when they put you on the seizure medicine. And it just makes it completely worse most of the time. And if they don't know that's what's going on, mm -hmm. it can trigger all kind of stuff. Like at one time, like after about a month of uh, 
um, going through all of it, I actually had a few little TIAs, mini TIAs, where, you know, half my body actually just shut down. I was always using my left side to do that. And the seizure medicine was causing the little mini TIAs because I wasn't having anything in the brain at the time. Right. Now, you um, were not diagnosed with epilepsy at all, right? There was nothing no, that showed no. on your EEJ. Okay. So I just wanted to no. make sure that, that was clear. Yeah. I mean, like I said, there was there was a couple spots they they thought at first, you know. Of course, they they, they kept examining it, but it wasn't enough to trigger an actual epileptic seizure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you remember yeah. what they said about that? As far as well, the spots? the word the, the the little spots they thought was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, well, they think it might have been it got triggered by the epilepsy medicine. Okay. It was uh it wasn't the first time around when I went in there actually it was the second time around because yeah. the second time around they actually put me in a medical induced coma for almost four days. Mm-hmm. And when I came out I actually felt really good when I came out actually because you know, but it took me a little while to get myself get the going again. You know, I was even on a walker for a little while because of the little mini TIAs from the seizure medicine. And the seizure medicine was causing the blood pressure to go up and everything because apparently I didn't need the seizure medicine at all. So after that, about a week later, they sent me down to New Orleans, of course, and I went, they, they took me off the seizure medicine, like cold turkey, of course, and I was there a whole week, and I kept having the seizures and seizures. Now, they kept bringing food, which was bread and pasta, and I didn't know anything about the gluten at all, or any of the celiacs at all, right. and they didn't, they, they did all kind of numerous of blood tests and couldn't find it. Mm. So it was, uh, it was a crazy journey for the least the most you know for our whole family yes i know i know and i i remember speaking to you one day when you were in the hospital and it was just it's a lot to go through and yes i, I remember your, how scared you were at that time so yes well, it's it's great to be on this end of the journey where no kidding. No you know, kidding. you've been diagnosed you know what it was causing that to begin with and i it's funny because i from not from the start but I was, I started to talk about uh, initially how it was like our body is creating, you know, like this rubber band and it just gets so stressed and, and uh, mm-hmm. taut that it's got a release, right? Yeah, and so it, my situation, it was just, it was trauma. It was internal stress, but it's funny because yours was physical stress. It was medical stress that was causing mm-hmm. it. And then later yeah. on, I, I, stopped calling it the rubber band or, or the earthquake effect and I called it the red flag syndrome you know that yeah. body's just throwing up red flags something is wrong and yours is definitely throwing up red flags or did not want any more gluten in that body no 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 it did not want no more gluten in that body no. and um come to find out too um, about I think it was 18 I did go back in the hospital in 18 in 2018 in September <laughs> I went to this place that uh, made gluten-free bread, of course, and it was sourdough because sourdough bread is supposedly supposed to have like something in it that helps balance out the stomach when you have celiacs. Mm -hmm. And um, I went there to get it and they advertise it. Uh, Apparently it had about 30 something percent gluten in it. So with celiacs, sourdough is good for celiacs, but you gotta be careful where you get it from because they can cross contaminate it if they put it in the same pan. Mm. And that's what had happened. They had, they put it in the same pan as the wheat sourdough, and it caused me to go through just about a whole week. Mm. And the first thing, of course, you know, because the doctors ain't seen me in almost two years then, first thing I went to the hospital, they put me right on camera right that fast. And my wife had to say, no, 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 do not put them on that camera. And they kept loading me with the, I don't forgot what they call that. that they, the anti-seizure medication? Yeah, okay. it's well, it's more of, I guess, a stress-reduced medicine they put in you. Okay. Through IV, and I can't think of the name of it. It's supposed to stop any kind of seizure, even if it's a stress seizure. It's supposed to like slow it down or something. And I Advent? can't think of the name of it. Advent, that's what it was. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and it was stop it. I can't it remember it. that. Don't really. <laughs> yes, and it will stop it. And the next thing you know, it'll come right back. Right. Because they were loading me with all the anti seizure medicine stuff and causing mm-hmm. it worse. And they didn't know it was a, 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 a celiac thing at the time. And they had to look back in the system. Oh, this guy's got celiacs. And my wife, they made my wife bring that bread up there. They tested it. And of course it had 30%. Oh, wow. Yes, 30% in it. And they said, that's, well, that's what caused it. And of course, you know, they said, you know, I've had a couple struggles since then, but nothing major. Everything's been, I mean, I'll be able to pray it out and just continue pushing forward and yeah. not let nothing get me down. 
So how long has it been since you've had a seizure? It's since uh, 2018. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. You got the celiac under control, changed your lifestyle, and changed my lifestyle. It yes. was, and then once I got that going, and it also, I was like, God, thank you. Show me the doors to more opportunities, to more worship and use, so I can get my faith build stronger. Because, yeah. like I said, I think the good Lord takes us to a lot of these stuff to help build our faith. It yeah, sure built mine. mine. <laughs> yes, it will build your faith. Built it from the ground up. <laughs> yes, yes, most definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. How's your family doing now? Are, They're doing are they good. Not gluten free um, or are they? Well, my son is. He's a little gluten free. Uh, he's not as strict as I am. Mm -hmm. of course and my little girl of course she has bless her heart she lost her hair due to alopecia mm -hmm. so um, but she's starting to grow a little bit back so we're praying every day that something would come back but she's in good spirits she she sings every sunday morning just about mm -hmm. or even sunday evening and she keeps good spirit and keeps her spirit alive and and she 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 tells me that's the way god made me <laughs> I've been blessed to see your daughter sing a couple of times. On yeah, Sunday. she's great. <laughs> yes, yes, her, her precious little spirit. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so, but yeah, my son's doing good. You know, he's he, he actually does have epilepsy himself, and he's got a couple of spots on his brain. But um, knock on wood, he hasn't had a seizure in a while. So, oh, and wonderful. It, when he had one, of course, I think recently it's been a little while, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a major one. It wasn't a major enough to send him into the hospital. Mm -hmm. so he's, he's been doing real good. We've been blessed with that. Oh, praise God. So, I think it, I mean, I, I know because of my journey that I can come alongside mm -hmm. people and it, it helps them. I, I can't help but imagine that your son must feel a little bit um, of a kinship with you that you've mm -hmm. gone through this. No, it's mm -hmm. not long term for you. It's it's under control. But the fact that that he's not alone in this, I think is it's very precious. It, it, he's and he's autistic too, so that kind of it kind of helped about in a in a sense. But mm -hmm. at, and he was he like oh he's like my my daddy had seizures too, so it's like okay, well, I'm not the only one or something yeah. out there, so. Yeah, it's so but, amazing. Yeah, and it kind of, <laughs> but, it, and then he knew I had it when I was a kid, because I told him that, you know, I, I did actually have seizures when I was a kid, and it actually was caused by a blow to my head when I was a very young child, mm. and, um, but they, they, they took me off the actual seizure medicine when I was 12 or 14 or something like that, mm -hmm. and it, it, it went for Ever without that, and then of course you know the celiacs brought a lot of the stress seizures back and the PNES seizures back. So yeah, yeah. But. Well, it's just it's one of those things that you just you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what's going to mm -hmm. trigger. But thank God He gave us a body that lets us know that something's not right, and if we don't change our course, that it's not going to get yeah. any better. I, I say no. it's um as hard as it was, it is definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me. Actually, you're right, because it, it, it brings our faith to bring it a lot stronger. And um, of course, my wife gets a lot of stress from, the, you know, had went through a lot of stress with it too. So yeah. she, yeah, so she's doing fun. good. Uh, she's she's been having some stomach issues herself. So we need to definitely keep her in prayers. Well, thank she's you. doing good though. Other than I'm, that, I'm glad your your two children and your wife have been through such a journey with me guess, and with just in general but i know that i know your faith is strong and it's just made it stronger so yes yes give god glory and all that amen definitely <laughs> well todd thank you so much for coming in and sharing your journey and i know we're gonna have another conversation and just talk about the bedrock of of what's gotten you through all this but i just want to thank you for this you're welcome no problem i mean i, I, I like sharing this kind of stuff because if I, I mean, if, even if somebody else hears it, that may trigger them, it's like, I might need to go get tested for the celiacs to make sure I don't have it, and it could save a life. Exactly, and what my hope yeah. is that it's not only people with, within the PNES community mm -hmm. that see this, or the supporters of it, but also the medical community, because mm -hmm. this is, like you said, the doctors didn't know, and so my hope is always that we can not attack them. That's never my desire is to attack anybody, but to mm -hmm. show them that this has been tried and mm -hmm. evidence has shown that it, it doesn't work or it's not helpful. Mm -hmm. And 
maybe it will help somebody else that they're going to come into contact with. So your mm -hmm. story can help inspire even the medical community, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, definitely. Because yeah. it's celiacs is one of them kind of things that a lot of folks wasn't really aware of for the longest time that they didn't anywhere they even had that. And I don't know if anybody ever used to watch the show Blue Bloods or anything like that, but there was a lady on there that played in that show, and they actually kicked her off the show for having PNES seizures. Oh my! And then she was actually uh, her hair started to come out a little bit. Yeah. She was losing teeth just didn't know, didn't know why she was losing teeth and she had went through the hospital she was having seizures and stuff of course just about like my story here and and i got to look uh, looking it up i was like wow this is just about the exact same story except for i wasn't losing teeth and the hair i was just going into like seizures with it and stuff and she had uh she she went out and finally started making it aware she's like an advocate for that stuff you know letting everybody know making it aware and stuff uh, i think her name was jennifer asbesto whatever her name is oh, she what was she diagnosed with she was diagnosed she had she had she was having pnes seizures but she was diagnosed with celiacs the oh, same wow. exact kind of have it so they call wow. it refactoring i think is what the name of it refactoring celiac is what they call it okay. and you got to be careful i mean sometimes the celiacs can still act up even on the gluten-free diet with refactoring mm -hmm. so just yeah, you know, I got to keep an eye out with it yes, and stuff. Yes, and people should definitely talk to their doctors mm -hmm. about that if they're concerned, if they think that yeah. it might be something that they're feeling in their gut that maybe they need to get checked out, please get mm -hmm. checked out. It's oh, yes, better. definitely. It's, yeah. it's worth the check it. Even if, even if you don't have it, just check it just to be sure. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Leave no, no uh, stone unturned. No, no. Not this not at all. Well, thank you. We're going to have another conversation okay. pretty soon. So okay. I just want to thank you again. And thank you for yeah. your family for just being such a great supporter of you. Okay. You know, well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, son.